Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to make HTTP requests with an authorization bearer token in F Sharp using FS HTTP and F Sharp library. So most web projects will talk to other services using HTTP requests. This is just kind of the way the web works right now. Uh, many services will require tokens or keys to identify an authorized request to prevent abuse because you know the internet's a wild place and people out there just scraping the internet and doing all sorts of bad stuff. Now, one method for including tokens on HTTP requests is the bearer token, and this way is pretty common. And so that's what we're gonna look at today. Now, F Sharp's FS HTTP library, uh, GitHub linked here, allows you to make HTTP requests in an ergonomic and functional way. And in this post, we'll explore how to make an HTTP request with FS HTTP that includes a bearer token. So you can, you can use this library to actually authenticate with these external services, which you'll probably be hitting. Now, quick call out, if you wanna build full stack apps with F Sharp, I use the Cloud Seed Project Boilerplate to jumpstart all my F Sharp web projects. This is basically the seed that kind of gets my project started with all the core essentials so I can get started actually building the app and not fiddling with configuration and stuff like that. Can learn more about that here. Okay, first off, let's talk about this example project I'm using to demonstrate FS HTTP. So to show how this works, we'll be using an API that requires a bearer token. I thought about building a full project to demonstrate this, but that seemed too complicated. So instead we'll be using a real API in the real world. I was hoping that there would be like some testing API, you know how you can get like a placeholder image or something from some APIs for bearer tokens. Like I could send it a request and it would come back and prove to me that it was on that. Um, but I didn't find anything like that. And so I was thinking maybe I would just build a little server to demonstrate this, but then it's like, that's way out of context because uh, now I got to show you how I built the server to prove this is working. Um, so instead we're just going to do the simplest thing possible. You know, if you're using a bearer token, you're probably integrating with an external API. So we're just going to use an external API that I know requires a bearer token. And we'll just quickly use that to demonstrate that this works because you know, you should never trust anyone on the internet. They got to prove that this thing works. So the market data stock market API, and this is a referral link here, provides access to near real time stock market data. And I recently just used it to build my stock option scanner. And so I'm familiar with it. And I know that it requires a bear token um, for certain stock lookups, which makes this a very good candidate candidate to demonstrate that, you know, with bear token, I can get all the stocks without bear token, I don't and therefore, um, this is actually working. And so quick overview of how this works. Um, the inputs of this are really to configure the API token. Um, the, and then I'm gonna just like have a few stocks that we're gonna look at to show you that, you know, it works or it doesn't. And then the processing of this is really, it's just gonna go loop over this stuff. It's gonna make an HTTP request to the API, and then it's going to attach the bearer token it has. And this is how we'll prove that the bearer token is actually on there. Now that it will just output the received data it gets. And as we'll see, you know, with the bearer, we'll get all data. And without the bearer, we'll only get the Apple stock because that's just what the API returns without a bearer token. Okay, so with that kind of context, let's go into how do we actually make an HTTP request with a bearer token using FSHTTP. So actually making bearer token is really easy. It's really just a string that's very similar to an API key. So all we have to do is add it to the request. And we can do this with FSHTTP by including the authorization bearer attribute in our HTTP request builder. So I've got this little helper function, make HTTP request because, you know, I want to do stock symbols. Um, we have this optional parameter here. And you can imagine that this is just going to create our... Um, URL we want to hit, and we'll, we'll dive into this a little bit later. But the important part here is we are building our HTTP request here, we're setting the URL, and then here we're setting the bearer. And so this is going to say, I want you to make this the bearer, and here's the token that I have. And you can imagine that this is a string. It's going to send this, and then it's going to um, basically get the response and turn it to JSON. So very simple. Um, the hard part is just me proving to you that this works. And so we can prove this works by looking at the responses with and without the bearer token. And here we're looking up Apple and Microsoft stocks. And so with an empty token, we can only get the Apple data and Microsoft fails. So we can see here, Apple, these are just debug lines. Um, I'm getting all of the data. Uh, for Microsoft, it's saying, hey, invalid token header because you didn't provide any credentials. And it's because um, the bear token I provided was an empty string, therefore it doesn't exist. Now with a valid token, the API gives us the stock data we're looking for. So here we get Apple and here we get Microsoft. So we can see that it works. Now you can find the full source code for this here. Um, and I have my replit instance here if you want to um, play around with it. And I will go into a demo to prove to you that this actually works. These screenshots come from somewhere. Um, so you can play around with it here, but you know, I will not give you my API key, you know, sorry. So here, let's go over 
to my replet. And we can see that I do not have an API key here. And so this is what it will look like when you see it. And so we've got my token here. Um, we've got stocks to pull Apple and Microsoft. This one comes free, no token needed. This one or really any other um, stock requires a token. So this is why we're demonstrating with this. We can see I have a function to help me create um, the URL. Really, it's just very simple part of its API and you just give it a stock symbol. And then here we are using that function I showed you earlier where we have a helper to make the request. So if we have our HTTP builder, um, we got to get, it's going to call our URL to build it for our stock symbol. We're going to have the authorization bear. It's going to use this token that we defined above here. Um, and then it's going to send that request and then it's going to get the response of that and just convert it to JSON. And now here's our main function, very simple, which is going to print to show us that it's running. And then it's going to get the stocks to pull. It's going to iterate over that list. And then for every stock it sees, it's going to make the HTTP request and then it's going to print out what it gets back. So here's the stock symbol we're looking for and here's the response we got. So very, very simple. And so now we're going to run it with no um, data to just show you that this is the real code and that this is the output we actually got. And so here we can see we get Apple back, but then Microsoft no uh, token provided because we got give it an empty token. And so it's not going to work. OK, what I've just done is gotten my real token, put it in there, and I'm not going to show you that token so you can't steal it. Um, but I am going to run it to show you that, yes, the token is added and it actually works now. And here we can see we get both Apple back and Microsoft back. Um, so that that bearer token is working. So if you want that code to play around with, um, you can find the Replit link here in the blog post. So if you're curious, I've written more about how I built the stock option scanner in F-sharp here, and Hominion's members can get full access to its source code here. Question for you is, what are you struggling with or curious about around building full stack apps with F-sharp? This helps me build a roadmap that's actually interesting um, and solves any problems you're having. Now, if you like this post, you might also like Cloud Seed Quick Start, um, get set up with a full stack F-sharp app in 10 minutes. Might also be interested in the Hamstack, a simple scalable tech stack for building modern web apps fast and cheap, and kind of my philosophy around building apps at both small and large scale. And you might be interested in how I host my server-side rendered F-sharp site on Google Cloud for less than $1 per month, basically how I I'm hosting sites like this that get a decent amount of traffic, but doing so in a very, very cheap way using modern, popular cloud tools. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.